Okay, thank you. So, whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. So, we can go. Thanks a lot. I'm ready. Uh, hi, Laura. Um, hi. Hi. Um, as, as, as a first question, I want to ask uh, how many slams are, uh, have you already done for uh, Eurosport Discovery Plus and how are you get used to this new role? Um, Australia was my first one for Eurosport. And then I've done a couple of other weeks. I did Monte Carlo um, and then Paris will be my next slam. So, yeah, still in early stages. Uh, but it's been so fun. There's uh, such a good team, um, you know, Babsy, Alize, and, and then the legends that we have as well, Matt McEnroe, Karecha, you know, the list is crazy. And then I was working with um, Justine and in, in Monte Carlo, and she was one of my heroes growing up when I was watching tennis on TV. So just to get the chance to work with someone like that is, is incredible. But yeah, it's, um, you know, long days, as, as I'm sure you know, at tennis tournaments, um, <laughs> it can go on for hours and hours, uh, but we have a great time doing it. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for Paris. Um, how is this change position from being a player to being the interviewer on court and talking to other player? Is it probably easier since you have you have been on the other side? I, I think so. Um, you know, I try and ask the questions that I would want to be asked if I was playing. And there's definitely some things that I know players better. So I feel like I can talk a bit more openly to them um, and hopefully they can talk more openly to me. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about being respectful of, of their time and, and knowing as well that um, a lot of the time you get asked the same questions and you have to do back to back interviews, especially on, on media day. And, um, you know, you have half an hour back to back. So it's just about trying to make it as fun as possible, because um, I, I think when the player is actually enjoying themselves, then it's, it's always going to be better for everyone involved. Is it more stressful than being a player? <laughs> um no no it's it's very different i would say um you know hosting for the first time in in monte carlo was very different to even being a pundit or a commentator because you have to be thinking five steps ahead all the time um but i i think the players definitely have the tougher job out on court <laughs> uh so coming to the wta season so far is that something that impressed you the most when tournaments player or uh, any results? Oh, I think there's three players who've impressed me the most. And Iga, Sabalenka, Rybakina, um, you know, they're the big three almost at the moment in the women's side. And it's so great to see their rivalries um, over the next few years because you feel like every player has a different strength and different personality, um, which which is fantastic for women's tennis because, um, you know, Iga was such a front runner this time last year going into the clay season, but actually it feels like a couple of people could win Roland Garros. I, I would still put Iga as, as the favourite uh, on a slower clay court in particular, but the fact that, you know, Elena won last week, Arena won in, in Madrid, um, it, it's only going to be positive and it will, it will force everyone else to get better as well because you want to try and compete with the best in the world. Uh, talking about this clay season so far, um, I always wanted uh, wanted to ask to like to someone who also played in the WTA tour as you as you did. How is this um, process of going to Paris by playing? I don't know Charleston, which is on green clay. Then you go to Stuttgart, maybe that is a clay indoor. Then Madrid, Madrid with the altitude, and then Rome, that may be closer to more similar let's say to madrid to paris sorry but at the same time this year was weather the weather was mm -hmm. a disaster so it will probably yeah. change those everything so do you think there, may, there might be like some um proper signals going to what could happen in paris or it may be also another different story yeah i think um you know you make a good point charleston plays quite slow still even though it's green clay uh, and then it's the complete opposite the week after um stuttgart plays very quick indoor clay and it feels like there's not a lot of clay on the surface there um and then madrid it's almost like it's its own thing i i think <laughs> the people who who do well in madrid don't necessarily do well in paris because the conditions are so different 
Um, so yeah, you're, you're right. Rome for me was always the most similar, um, but I, I think it all goes out the window this year because we have no clue what the weather's going to do and just changes the day-to-day -day conditions so much like we saw last week. Um, so if it's if it's wet the first few days in Paris, the courts get really, really heavy and people don't often have a chance to practice on site in Paris if the, if the weather is bad uh, because they need to protect the courts. So, um, yeah, it's it's tricky. And, and every week you have to make adjustments with the strings, with the tension and so on. And so um, it's just about being as prepared as possible. But, uh, yeah, I think in Paris you have to be a great mover as well. You can't get away with of not being able to slide like you can in Madrid, um, which is why I was never very good in Paris. <laughs> um, now going a little bit uh, deeper, maybe into the situation, like last year, obviously she was she won everything from Doha to Paris. This year, it wasn't like the same situation, but at the same time, she was always going into semi-final and final. And I wonder how much this can, on the on one side, maybe, like she probably needed something more, in your opinion, or on the other side, it's, all, it's, it's still a very big experience for someone who's still 21 years old. I think people forget how young she is, don't they? And I, I definitely do, because it seems like she's been around for so long and, and she's so good at being the front runner, um, which is so tough to do at any age, especially at 21. Um, but you know, it's it's tough to compare her season this year to last year because the tournaments were different. The two week um, tournaments, I don't think she enjoyed as much. Um, whereas last year she got on a bit of a roll. So by the time she played the, the final in Rome, she was playing some of the best tennis of, of her career so far. Um, but it's, you know, it's minor, minor things that, that you can pick out of her game that aren't quite as fluid as they were last year. I think the serve is um, perhaps a, a little bit more disjointed than it was. Um, but I know she's working on it at the moment and, you know, she's got a couple of, of days to prepare in in front of Paris. But um, I, I would still see her as a favourite on clay. I think she just moves unbelievable on the surface. Um, also, on, one more question on Iga is about the, the attitude she's having on court. For example, when she goes deep in the tournament and she plays semi-final and final, especially in the final, like I think she played 17th final. She lost just four final. But overall, I think that the most important like message she sent is that when she lost the final, she, the other the, the opponent had to play like at 100%. Again, for example, Krejcikova in Ostrava or Sabalenka in Madrid. So I'm. it's kind of like, is that? easy to to be like to raise the bar this much in your opinion oh, not at all not at all and she's always improving I, I think you know the differences that we've seen in her game over the last two years from when she first won in Paris compared to now she, she moves better she hits the ball bigger she um you know she's changed some things on the serve she's added more speed on the forehand and it's that strive to perfection that she just has naturally where even when she's six love five love up against someone she wants to win every point still and she wants to do the right things out on court and um, it is forcing everyone to be better because everyone has had to improve to try and match her level and um, you know this time last year I don't think we would have been thinking at all that anyone else but eager could win Paris and the fact that there's now at least a couple more names in the mix just shows that she's pushed everyone uh, to improve just as much as she has. Um, the other question is about either Sabalenka and Rybakina. For example, with Sabalenka, the start of her career, and she already won two big titles. And Rybakina, has, again, also won two titles. She just won Rome. Um, when, in your opinion, they had the, the biggest improvements in their game and how can they try to, to take this attitude going to, into Paris that maybe is not their best chance to win a, a Grand Slam tournament? Yeah, I mean, Elena for me is so underrated mentally. Um, you look at the match that she played against Iga in Rome, she was almost down and out, but she just kept competing. And yeah, Iga withdrew in the end, but the fact that Rebecca has stayed in the match, no matter what the scoreline was, um, 
for me is almost the best part of her game at the moment because we know she can hit the ball big we know she can serve unbelievable um but just that fighting attitude um which she doesn't show so often because she's quite quiet on the court but um that's why i think it's underrated because you know she wins matches just by digging deep and by keeping herself um in it no matter what the scoreline is so um yeah i think considering that she's where she is in the rankings without any Wimbledon points is slightly incredible, really. And um, yeah, for me, she's like one of my favourite players to watch at the moment. But um, so is Sabalenka. They're, they're so fun. They're so dynamic. They're, they're really different personality wise, um, which I think is, is great. Um. With Barty and then Fiontek, we had the a number one player that really raised the bar really, really high. Uh, now Sabalink is getting closer to maybe overtakes Fiontek. Maybe it can also happen in Paris, for example. Um, I just wonder, in your opinion, like where Sabalinka changed this year, if something changed, and where she can also improve a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, I think she's changed mentally um you know everyone was talking about the serve last year and it's just not an issue anymore because she's so tough on the big points when she's break point down is almost when she serves her best and that for me is is all mental because it's that major concentration that she can pull together uh, the toughest score lines um so yeah that that's definitely been the biggest difference but i mean it's hard to say that she she hits the ball better because she always hit it crazy hard and, and crazy deep on the forehand. Um, I, I think her movement has improved slightly as well, where she can play a little bit more open stance on the backhand when she's pushed wide. Um, but, you know, she just does everything really well. That's, what, that's what's so good about these top players at the moment is there's no holes in their game. You don't see any major weaknesses. You don't see any areas that you can try and, expose if you're playing them and and so to beat any of them you have to play your best tennis for two plus hours um to try and find a way through because they not only hit well they move well they they compete and uh it's really like they yeah they're striving for more all the time my last one is about uh if you see if you have seen so far any like development in the in the in the wta tour in the tennis situation from, I don't know, five or 10 years ago to the kind of tennis they are playing at the moment. If something really improved a lot, especially now with, uh, we can say, Sabalenka, Spiontek and Rybakina, maybe raising the level in some aspects. So maybe I ask you if you see anything changing and progressing, let's say. Yeah, it's a really interesting question, actually, um, because I think about it a lot. I, I think the level that, there was 10 years ago or even five years ago was really high for sure um but I, I just think that everyone has to be able to move well these days you know i think if if you were playing 10 years ago with some of the surfaces you could maybe get away with playing super fast tennis and being a big big ball striker but not moving so well and now that the surfaces and the balls have slowed down so much um, over the last couple of years, that there's only a handful of, of fast tournaments, you actually have to do everything well. You know, you can't have a, a major weakness like like movement where people um, can expose you so quickly. So I think that that's the biggest difference. Um, but it changes all the time, and um, you know, I, everyone will have a different opinion on this um, as well. So yeah, I, I think. Women's tennis for me at the moment is probably the strongest um, it's been in, in some time. Okay, thank you so much, Laura. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Diego. I'll send this recording over to you later. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.